were watched. I didn't see anything. I felt it in my stomach. I was a toad on a wet rock. A snake was looking at the back of my neck. In 1944, director Edward Dimitrik built the prototype for a different kind of mystery thriller previously unseen by film audiences, one that vividly defined the term hard-boiled. Oh, that. That's just part of my clothes. I hardly ever shoot anybody with it. Featuring decadent nocturnal images from the pulp fiction of Raymond Chandler, Murder, My Sweet was a breakthrough film with attitude and style to burn. I find men very attractive. I imagine they meet you halfway. Yet today, few people acknowledge Dimitri as one of the innovators of the genre that later became known as film noir. Instead, Edward Dimitrik is remembered for the tumultuous events that rocked the Hollywood film community in 1947 and spelled disaster for this director who was at the pinnacle of his profession. However, when Dimitrik first arrived in Los Angeles in the 20s, the future held great promise. Starting as a studio messenger boy and working his way up to film editor at Paramount, he moved into the director's chair in 1939, grinding out low-budget thrillers and mysteries for Paramount and Columbia, films that taught him how to work fast and creatively with very little money. After signing with RKO in 1942, Dimitri began to develop his own unique style, starting with The Falcon Strikes Back, which experimented with lighting effects to achieve an atmosphere of unseen evil. Dimitri would go on to exploit this moody style in Hitler's Children. Its sensationalistic subject matter would make it the biggest money maker yet, among RKO's box office hits. I am ready to sacrifice my life for Hitler. I am ready to sacrifice my life for Hitler. I am ready to die for Hitler. I am ready to die for Hitler. Released during America's involvement in World War II, both Hitler's children and Dimitri's next film, Behind the Rising Sun, played on America's worst fears about their enemies. In a menacing visual style, the films mirrored the paranoia and uncertainty in the world at that time. Well, now, just a minute. That'll teach you not to get in the way of a Japanese soldier. <laughs> Dimitri soon graduated to more prestigious films at RKO, proving his versatility at directing sensitive dramas as well as macho action films. But even in these pictures, Dimitri always seemed drawn to the darker side of human nature. I know it's tough when the woman you love goes over to the enemy, but you can't let her tear you. Joe, that's none of your business. That's right. But risking the lives of these men is my business. This is a dirty war we're fighting, Andres. In 1944, Dimitri's distinctive visual style and his observations of collapsing moral codes came together in a remarkable film, Murder, My Sweet, which many credit with influencing the look and the attitude of every suspense thriller that followed it. Dimitri used unconventional camera angles and unusual effects to create a world of treachery and deceit. Populated by cynical cops, sociopathic thugs, and scheming femme fatales. I've kept forgetting to tell you that you shouldn't kiss a girl when you're wearing that gun. Leaves a bruise. Murder, My Sweet became a box office sensation, making Dimitri one of the most sought-after directors in Hollywood, and earned him the title Mr. RKO. <laughs> What do you want? Black coffee, eggs, and a scotch and soda. Dimitri also gave Dick Powell a new screen image, transforming the one-time romantic crooner into a cynical private eye. Powell's new tough guy image was taken a step further by Dimitri in his next film, Cornered, where Powell pulled out all the stops as a desperate, driven character obsessed with avenging his wife's murder. There's only one way of stopping me for good, and you've got it right there in your hand. You're a very reckless man, Mr. Gerard. Cornered was an even bigger box office success than Murder, My Sweet, but both films were just warm-ups for Crossfire, the first Hollywood film to address the subject of anti-Semitism. Samuels didn't do anything to you. You just went crazy. I didn't do nothing to Samuels either, except to flick him like that. Not that hard, maybe. Stop it, money! Stop money! Money, stop it! Money, stop it! You stop it! You went nuts! Nothing gets to eat you, money! Well, I don't like Jews, and I don't like nobody who likes Jews. In the guise of a suspense thriller, 
Dimitrik explored racial prejudice, once again using unusual visual effects to capture the twisted perspectives of a sick mind. After Crossfire, the sky was the limit for Dimitrik. Not only did he enjoy coast-to-coast -coast critical acclaim as well as tremendous box office clout, but he was suddenly in the Oscar race with a nomination for Best Director of 1947. Then, the bottom fell out. Dimitrik was blacklisted for his past affiliation with the Communist Party, and one of his earlier films, Tender Comrade, was used against him by House Un-American Activities members who saw the film as blatant communist propaganda. Well, for instance, now the four of us here have two cars, two sets of tires wearing out. We could sell one car and use the other on a share and share alike basis. And we could, oh, we could just do lots of things. How about it, kids? Let's take a vote on it right now, okay? Dimitrik, along with nine of his colleagues, became known throughout the industry as the Hollywood Ten, after refusing to testify at the House hearings. After an unsuccessful appeal to the Supreme Court, Dimitrik served his prison sentence and returned to Los Angeles determined to cut all former ties to his political past. Thanks to the efforts of producer Stanley Kramer, Dimitrik was given another chance to direct in a four-picture deal that culminated with the Kane Mutiny in 1954. The Oscar-nominated drama re-established his credentials and Dimitrik went on to enjoy a highly successful second career as a director of lavish, big-budget entertainments with top-name stars. You don't love me. You never did love me. You hate me because I'm Southern. While Rain Tree County proved that Dimitri could handle the massive demands of filmmaking on an epic scale, pictures like Walk on the Wild Side demonstrated that Dimitri had lost none of his flair for controversial subject matter. Can any man love a woman for herself without wanting her body for his own pleasure? Love is understanding and sharing, enjoying the beauty of life without the reek of lust. Even with a steady stream of glossy Technicolor hits in Dimitri's later career, it will be the suspense thrillers from his RKO glory years that will stand the test of time. These films, which explored a nocturnal world of crime, corruption, and the dark side of human nature in an evocative visual style, will continue to influence filmmakers and entertain movie lovers for years to come. A dizzying search for a missing woman leads to blackmail and murder in Edward Dimitrix. Murder, My Sweet, Saturday at 12 a.m., only on Turner Classic Movies.